I felt and saw this presence of something like a ghost. As I was reaching for my keys, something growled at me coming out of the basement. It was bad energy. I was sort of feeling like I was letting Satan out of hell. I saw out of the corner of my eye what I thought was the girl falling off the roof. I, I couldn't think. It was so loud and I was so terrified that I just froze. I'm not calling for that. I'm calling because I'm freaking out here. I felt this presence try to push itself down on top of me very violently. It would not go away. It was freaking me out. And I look at my arm and it's got a stretch on it. Welcome, everybody, to Ghosts of Greystone Beverly Hills. My name is Cleet. And I'm Chris. And we are those Keith brothers, and we are so excited to have you back. Hopefully you're coming back. Um, this is going to be a really interesting show tonight. We've got three three different locations, mm-hmm. right? Yep. What are they? What are those locations? We've Help got me. the kitchen. We have a servant's wing staircase, and we have the break room in the servant's wing. Okay. So ba- tonight, it's, it's the spooky apparitions... And poltergeist. That's okay. what that's that's what we're gonna have tonight. Okay. So a l- lot of interesting and the and the first couple stories are really odd and interesting, which I really dig. So why don't we jump into it? Do you have anything you want to say first? Um, you just want to jump right in. Yeah, we can touch base on the servants of the break room. I'm curious about the name of that, but we can talk about that when we get to the break room. Yeah, yeah. Let's just uh, why don't we just run into what's the what's the first Okay, first one. Yeah. New kitchen. All right. In the new kitchen. Um all right. This is uh, with Andrea. Okay. Okay. So we, we talked before about uh, the new kitchen versus the historic kitchen. New kitchen was redone in 2011, 2012. Servant's wing, they took like four or five rooms of the servant's wing, then dining room included, and they built a new kitchen to use for catering i'm just so against it so I, i'm just gonna move right past that don't go don't get in we it. won't go there we won't go there but this this was a this is a really great story because andrea who uh i love and by the way uh hello to andrea out there i hope you're well and um she got a hold of me because she's some, she has the gift and boy she gifted and she she has the gift, and she and the gift is uh, feeling, hearing, sensing, smelling apparitions, right? Spirits, and paranormal. And um, she uh, worked for a company that helped clean locations within the city of Beverly Hills. This is twenty nineteen. This is twenty nineteen. So um, she would always, you know, when things would happen, she would alert me, especially with her, because she had so many things that happened to her, and we'll we'll hear some of them for sure in the show as we keep going. But this one was really interesting. It's very kind of bizarre, and she's really funny about it. The reason that she kept this to herself. Let's let's, let's oh, okay. listen. Yeah. Yeah, he took over for me okay. on the weekends. Okay. Uh, Greystone and the park restrooms, Saturdays and Sundays at night. His name is Manuel. Um, he's a Mexican. So this guy, he doesn't speak English at all. Um, I talked to him because he called me the Sunday night at the Oscars night. And he asked me, Andrea, uh, do you know if there are ghosts at Greystone? Do you know that if they spook at Greystone? And I was like, no, you're crazy. Why? (laughs) And you said that because why? I said that because I didn't want him to quit. Because I knew that if I tell him the, the truth, he would quit immediately because he sounded spooked. So I asked, why? What, what's going on? And he said, well, it's not the first time, but today I saw someone looking at me from the window, uh, the mansion, the one that is closest to the ladies' restroom from the firehouse. So, so is that the servants? The servants. By the kitchen? Here. Yeah, by the kitchen. So Here, the, 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 the catering kitchen. So, so the, the first window on the corner. Okay, gotcha. So it's right by the door there. The yeah, first so window. I asked him what happened, what was going on, and he said, well, it was already dark, and someone was flashing me. Someone had a flashlight and was flashing at me and was pointing the light at me, and it happened for about five minutes. And I said, did you were able to look inside? And he said, no, I only saw the light. 
So he saw that because <laughs> how did he see it when he was driving? No, he down? was coming into the, the, the here, mm -hmm. into the restrooms, and he, and someone flashed him when he was trying to get into the ladies' restroom. Okay, so, so, so the ladies' restroom, you can see that window. That from window the okay. from the ladies' restrooms. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he started cleaning the ladies' restroom, and every time he would come out, someone would be flashing at him. And when he finished, they were flashing at him, that's when he called me. And I said, um, no, don't be silly, it's the Oscars night, so there's a lot of pranks at Greystone, and it was the Rangers. He that's said, what you told him, yeah, the that's Rangers. what I told him. And he said, no, Andrea, it's not the Rangers because I already did the ra Ranger shack and there's no, no one there. It's no one at the property. I know when the Rangers are here. And I said, no, Manuel, there's a Ranger inside. I already knew it was a lie. And he said, no, 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 no. There's no one here. I know they, they, they spook here. I can feel it. This is weird. And I said, no, Manuel, you're crazy because <laughs> I didn't want him to quit. Um, Anyway, I know he didn't believe me, and three weeks later, he quit. So, he did he ask other people then? That's why it took three weeks for him to get out of here? Yes, I think he asked my my um, floor crew guys. So, they must have talked to Manuel? They must have talked to Manuel because they see, they would see each other uh, at the beginning of their shifts on Saturday or Sunday. I don't remember, but there's one day that they see one another and most probably Manuel asked them and they said yeah Andrea is lying <laughs> she has been spooked as well <laughs> so did you ever talk to Manuel mm, and say no. hey I'm sorry I mean this here's what mm. I, I had I said that because I just wanted you to keep your job or no no I didn't I didn't I feel bad but I didn't okay I didn't um but I know he was really really spooked and he didn't he didn't buy the the, the ranger stuff. <laughs> the ranger story. So there's another guy from this floor care crew, Ernesto. Um, I forgot his last name. So this guy, Ernesto, he feels attracted to that window as well. Really? Yeah. So a couple of times he told me, hey, I feel someone watching me from a window. And I was like, what window? And he described the same window as Manuel. Is that crazy? Yeah. That's weird. Is that wild? A question for you. Yeah. Um, when uh, Manuel yeah. uh, was there, he, he's at night, right? There's nobody else. There's no uh, rangers, people. What, the, the cleaning crew comes in last, right? They usually, usually they would come in at 1030. Oh, okay. 1030 or 11. Do they have keys for the gate? Because yeah. the gate's locked up. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there's nobody. There's literally nobody. They there. would usually come in the servants' gate down below, right? Not not the 905 gate. Okay, they would come in. They have put in the code, come inside and drive up the hill, and then go okay. up to the area. There's a long driveway up yeah. the hill to to get to Greystone, and I would imagine at nighttime it's pretty, it's oh it's it's pretty chilling. Yeah, I it mean I, imagine I've done it a man, many yeah. times, but it's. For people that are cleaning, I, I can't even imagine going up there by themselves. Well, if, if it's not. Haunted, it's not a problem. Well, but the word is everybody knows the place is haunted. So when Manuel goes up there and suddenly he's seeing that, and but he doesn't know it was haunted because he wouldn't have. He probably wouldn't have done the gig. No, no, he wouldn't have done. No, it. no, no. So way. there's there's nobody around, nobody, and there's a flashlight coming from that. That's that's what tripped me out. Yeah, because that's interesting. When when uh, he, when he goes into the ladies' restroom, which is literally remember the fire to clean. Yeah, to clean the firehouse is there that used to be my my one of my offices up up top, and I think we talked about earlier the 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 bays. Have we done that? We talked mm -hmm. about that? yeah because we did it with Glenn. Oh, well, maybe not. No, we talked about the bays and the fire trucks okay, and all that okay. stuff. So right next Previous to those episode. bays uh, were um, uh, converted into restrooms for, for the, uh, the, the public, male, female restrooms. The female restrooms are close to those bays, which means they're closer to the East Court, which is where the theater is and where the entrance is to the servant's door right there by the new kitchen. So when he goes into that that last uh, stall there for to go into the woman's restroom, mm -hmm. you can see that window right mm -hmm. there. Right. So he's looking over and he's seeing this light. Right. Which which is unreal because yeah, that, there's nobody inside the house. It really is. And it's messing with him. 
Right. That light isn't just like floating into the courtyard. It's inside. We yeah. Where he's looking at like what what is going on here? Okay. So she so she had mentioned. Ernesto, were you able to talk to Ernesto? Yeah. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. No, that's I, what I, this one. The, y- yeah. The next soundbite. Yeah, is. I got a hold. Oh. I, I through Andre. I said, please let me talk to Ernesto because I can't. Manuel left. He ran out of the country or something. He was gone. He's he had enough. All right. So you want to hear Ernesto and hear his story? Yeah. Let's 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 hear him. You don't need to set it up because we just were. Yeah, we kind of heard it. Every time I clean the restroom, the uh, female restrooms, mm-hmm. uh, something makes me look to the window on the on the kitchen and then. Big kitchen. Okay. I know there's nothing there because I've been there during the day, but um, I don't know. Something just makes me look at it, like if something is calling me, mm-hmm. and I just stare at it. Uh, something comes to me. I feel weird. I get a fear inside me. Um, that's what I feel. So, you've been up there by yourself at night? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, not too late. I've been with someone else, mm-hmm. but. Every time I'm coming out from the restroom, from mm-hmm. the woman's restroom, yeah. something makes me look into the window, into into that side of the, of the kitchen. It's either up or down. I know where you're talking. I know where and you're talking. Just, it's just making me look. Okay. I don't want to, but it's just making me look into it. So you never, when you were at the, the, the women's bathroom and it was calling you to look over that way, did you ever see anything? Never did. Never saw anything inside, whatever, but you felt like... Something was. Some something is making me look to the window. Mm-hmm. I know there's nothing in there because I know it's the kitchen and upstairs is the service room. Right. So, but something is making me look into. There's like few windows that I just look and I don't see anything. I've never experienced something like that. Now, did did Ernesto did he continue working or did he quit? No, he can. I think he continued, but I think what happens is they rotate. So oh, many times that oh. new people will come in. And they okay, we're gonna have you up at Greystone this time, and uh, that I remember that sound. Remember all the sound in the background mm-hmm. here. That was his. I had to meet him after work, at, at dark, before he was ready to head out because it was a. Uh, it's in uh, downtown Beverly Hills. There's, there's an area underneath the parking lot and everything where they have all these guys show up at one time to get all their. You know all their equipment, everything. They're going to go out and clean everything. Oh, oh, that's so where you met him. That's the only time I could, oh, I could I meet with him. Okay. So, uh, but is is that fascinating? Yeah. Same location, you know, obviously, but but I mean the same uh, window that Manuel had right. the same. And he wasn't talking to Manuel at all. Or no, like no, that. no, no. You sure? Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. I, mean, I think Manuel hit the road, and then they said Ernesto, you got to take oh, over now. Oh, okay. 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 I- interesting. It, I think that's yeah. just fascinating. It really man. is. I, I just, like, Anytime there's something that doubles up on something. It corroborates. I mean, yeah, it just corroborates. It's so. wonderful. Uh, is Who's up next? Uh, we're going on to the next location, the Servant's Wing Staircase. Oh, oh, so this is going to be... By the way, I don't have my phone to do that, uh, the um, Dan... The text? text? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's over there, off, okay. ca- off camera. Okay. Maybe the staff can bring it to me, <laughs> you think? I hope so. Okay. Um, Well, this is with Michael, if you want to talk about Michael. Okay. So um, there was a ranger up at Greystone. Michael, by the way, I don't know if if Ernesto or Manuel had the gift or not. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know that. I'm guessing they didn't. So that, you know, blows that out of the window. It's not that you you have to have the gift in order to be connected or, or somebody trying to, a spirit trying to connect with you. But... Oftentimes, if they see that you have the gift, then they will. So I don't know about those two guys. Okay, so this is Ranger Mike. He yeah. doesn't want his last name. Yeah, yeah. He was. He didn't want to do this to begin with, but I talked to him and said, I, how about we won't use your, we'll just call you Ranger Mike. He goes, okay. And I'll have to, uh, running this recording, I'll have to disguise his voice. And Cleet's voice will be disguised as well, obviously, because he's probably talking back and forth. He is talking with, yeah. with Mike. So yeah. you'll... Don't be confused that both sound like they're criminals. <laughs> <laughs> and one really is. <laughs> one, one is so, him. <laughs> so, uh, but um, Mike had an incident that took place, uh, I don't even know the year. Do you have the year? No. Okay. It was during a design show. We're getting ready for a design show. So I'm guessing like 2007 or something or in that area. And... Uh, he was he was a ranger who had to had to shut down everything because 
the mansion had all these things in it from the design yeah, show. Yeah, we'll listen to it. Yeah. His, uh, just so you know, it, when he refers to Steve, yeah. that's his boss. R Ranger. Ranger Steve. Ranger, you know Ranger Steve Clark. Yes, so, is Mike's boss. Yeah. So let's, let's listen. When I recall, as I walked in here, I, I didn't directly look to my right, but I knew something was there. And, and you sensed I, it? I not only sensed it, well, first I, I sensed it, but I, I, this is what happened. I was, I was kind of walking so fast to go down the stairs toward the uh, old kitchen, the old kitchen. So I was heading uh, to down the stairs, but what I sensed and what I believe I saw out of the corner of my eye, because I kind of actually almost passed the hallway, was, um, was like a, a child, a little boy. Uh, I thought it was a little boy. Um, looking right up the stairwell and on the handrail and the, um, and, uh, Okay, the, 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 brain, the, the railings, yeah. I thought I saw a little boy looking through there and looking at me as, as I walked by. So I, I kind of quickly passed by, glanced back, and the boy was gone. And I, I remember believing, hearing, thinking that this, the boy took off running and went down the hallway and I heard the steps. Now this is this happened a long, long time no, but ago. But that's exactly what you told me. So this, I'm going all by memory. Mm -hmm. It's it's all by. I'm, I'm trying to re remember it now, and, and it's funny because uh, you know coming back to this and that one moment, it, it's kind of uh, it, I'm drawing, recalling it, yeah. drawing the, the memory. And as I walked right past here, I, I sent somebody looking, a little kid looking at me, a little person. Um, and I just looked up, or I walked by and, looked, and I thought, who is I said, who's that? I think I even said, like, who's that? And then, and then I stopped and waited to hear, and I thought I heard the steps, and I just ran up there trying to catch the person. So I, let's go up. So I ran up the stairs, and I, I may have, I think, I, I may have said, hey, uh, the match is closed. You know, come back. And, and I looked down the hall. And I stopped, and I and I, I was trying to figure out where did this person go, and then it bothered me because I realized there was a person in in the mansion, and uh, we that door was supposed to be closed. Right. I, I, if I remember one thing from way back when, it was it, the interior was closed off to the public, so we wouldn't allow anybody in here because it was a design show at the time. It was a design show at the time, so we weren't allowed anybody in here. And I remember opening up with my keys and uh, coming in, and then it bothered me because now there was somebody in here. With the, and if design show, then that's even worse right. for, for the stuff that's in here. So I actually, I went all the way through the hallway. Because you told me that you said, where are your parents? Because the person was so small, I, I just uh, assumed that it was a kid, a child, a kid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe a, a little, a little boy, is what I was thinking. The boy took off running, and I thought I heard the steps, and I came up here, and I spent, I spent a good, like at least ten minutes, maybe more, I forget, but I was looking for this kid, and then um, I remember I had to get something for maybe Steve or. or the other super, I think Terrence might have been here, I forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I was I was on a mission to do something for somebody, which is why I was going going down to the kitchen or that area. I forget what it was. But I I realized I had to complete that detail or that mission, but I was bothered by the fact that now there was somebody up here. But after listening and or trying to look for this child and not finding it, I looked all over kind of hard. Then it, I, it occurred to me that maybe I didn't see some, something. Maybe it was just imagination. Maybe it was just in my mind. Okay. But um, it, I remember it bothered me because uh, I was oh I was kind of fearful to to um, tell Steve that hey I, I screwed up. I, the door was open. I let somebody in, kind of thing. I, and and um, I, I wasn't sure if uh, if in fact 
I, I saw what I, what I, I, it was so real. I thought for, for certain there was a kid that came in and hid and saw was hiding from me. But afterwards, I wasn't totally sure. And I think I told the story later, like, hey, I had something weird happen. And that, that was, that, that to me, that was weird. That, that to me, that, that's funny that me coming back here after uh, 13 years, and, and reoccur, you know, you know, reliving it, that, that it's, uh, that now it's coming back to me. And I, and I kind of remember some of those thoughts of like, oh, sh I, I screwed up. I bet I had somebody in the mansion or, or, oh, shoot, was that a, was that not real? Was that a ghost? Or was that, you know, was that just all in my mind? But, but it was so real that, that I, I, it, it, I had to look for somebody. That's how real it was. Once you know that you don't have a kid in here, how did you justify the fact that you went looking for him and all that stuff and he's, and he's not in the house? Or did you literally think, I guess I didn't see something, or I guess it was a ghost, or I guess uh, it's, it was my imagination? The, all of that. Okay. All of that. That's, that's, uh, I did, uh, I looked hard through here. I didn't hear anything else. I didn't see anything else. This is the second floor landing. Yeah, the second, I looked down the halls. I started looking and I said, oh yeah, you're right. I started going through the doors and said, hey, uh, uh, mansion's closed. Mansion's closed, where are your parents? I said, where, okay, where are your parents? Are you, uh, who else, who's in here? You need to come out now. This is a ranger. And, and I was like, hey, where are your parents? I do remember coming out here yelling because I, I wish I should have been the only one in here. So I do remember now, you're right, I did say like, hey, where are your parents? As I'm walking through, I was yelling in some of the rooms. And then I stopped and I thought, Shit, maybe, maybe I didn't see a little kid here. Maybe it was uh, just my imagination. I, I, I think that's what I thought. I, I'm pretty sure that's what I, that's what I felt. Okay, it, it wasn't, uh, that, that uh, maybe I, I didn't see, uh, uh, maybe it wasn't a kid. I, I, cause I couldn't find the kid and it happened so quickly. It was out of the corner of my eye, but thinking I heard the steps and s seeing what I saw out of the corner of my eye, especially when I thought the little kid was looking through the, through the, uh, the railings, the railings mm -hmm. at me as I walked by. And then when I came back, it, he was gone. and I, Pretty sure I heard footsteps. I'm pretty sure I heard footsteps. So that's the reason I ran up here, and I yelled, and then I and then I thought maybe maybe I, it was just my imagination. See, see, it's so difficult to believe that it's real. Even though Mike worked there and he's he worked there for I don't know how many five years. I don't know six years something like that. But he knew the place had a history, right? But when it happens to you, it's 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 either it's real or you justify. Right. There's no really in between. Oh, maybe I didn't. Did I? Well, it couldn't have been a go. It had to be my imagination. Well, he this one I wrote down a couple of things. It was like he was afraid uh, to tell his supervisor, Steve, because right. he let somebody in the mansion. It's that real to, that it, to it, him. It, yes, of course. Yeah, it was uh, real. Yeah. And and I don't think I asked him if it was solid or see-through. I'm, yeah, no. I'm guessing it was solid because if it was see-through, he would have thought it was a ghost. Well, right? If you I, could see, like, like, your mind can play tricks. So if, if he's seeing it, he's probably thinking it's a... You're just justifying that part. I mean, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I can't. I, I but but I, I, think, I think it was solid to him. And well, he's, if enough. he's running through going like, where's your parents? Right, you know, right. It was real. That was, it was real. And God, I just love that. And he's such a good guy. Mike's a great guy. Uh, I, I totally believe him, and we, we had quite the conversation that day. Um, and 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 Chris also, do you have anything else? Yeah. Know? Well, I I just wanted you you uh, talked about uh, you reminded uh, you remembered an incident uh, that Mike didn't. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Forgot about an incident. Or something yeah. Like yeah. That? So so this is the culmination of this whole story. The great thing about this was. He saw that. He told me. Now, remember, this was during. And we design. still have another interview. We still have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second this part. was during an interview. I mean, I'm sorry. During during a design show, that this happened to Mike, 
And he came and told me, my God, you know what? I saw this kid, and like, you're not going to believe this. I went, you're kidding. Now, I wasn't going to write a book, wasn't doing anything. He was just telling me this story, and it really fascinated mm-hmm. me. And then it kind of corroborated itself by what we're going to play here. Okay, he called you into the room? Is that Well, just, yeah, let's okay. just play it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what's going on. I walked into the, downst- uh, the, the, the downstairs room Correct. and it was like the uh, the Greystone Friends of Greystone or Greystone uh, historical. Uh, historical group that put up a whole room that showed the, the history of the Greystone Mansion and as we were going through I saw a picture of the family and when I looked at the the picture and I was looking I was looking at all these different pictures but when I saw that one picture I saw a bunch of little children on there and when I, I looked at the, the photo, the child, kind of I, I, dark, dark clothing or whatever, I thought, that's the kid that was in the, in the stairwell. I think I, I said that, or I thought that, I think I told the, the ranger, like, hey, uh-huh. I think that's the kid that was in the stairwell. Now that could just be my imagination. You called me over, please, come here. I said, what's up, just come here. And you, okay, was it you, you led me into that room, and you went up to that photo and said, that's the kid right there. And I said, the kid, the kid in the railing, that's who I saw. And I went, oh my God, really? You were, you were dead on. That's him. Really? Oh yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, it's wow. what you just said. It's what you yeah, just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, dude. I, and you were like... <laughs> Shook. You were like, I, I, you couldn't believe it. That is the kid. Yeah. I. Uh, you know what, man? That's that's. Does yeah. Ring a bell? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. does ring a bell. Mm-hmm. It does ring a bell. I remember that room. It's what's crazy is uh, that's that's a long time ago, and I, I'm trying to piece it all together. But mm-hmm. but I I remember seeing the picture of the family, and there was, must have been about four or five kids there, and I said, Hey, that's the kid. I wasn't really a believer when I first started here. I, don't, I probably may have told you or Steve this. Not a believer, but there were times when I was in this place uh, at night or in the day or early morning, and some some weird energy would just hit me that I don't have that often. But when it does, it's a sense of um, uncertainty or not, not very you know not, not comfortable. What I'm saying is that you're, a certain energy um, comes up in you that, that makes you kind of uh, be on guard. And one thing I tell people about this place is that I think this place, uh, during its course of its history, and here, some, uh, some bad things happen. Maybe that energy of that one person still resonates. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, he has the gift. Because he says he feels yeah, uh, a lot. It, 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 it was never apparent to me that he had a gift uh, until that interview. We talked, um, mm-hmm. and he, and he kind of went over it. Not a lot, just like I do feel things. But a lot of us, like other people, remember, uh, I'm trying to think if we get, we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. But there's another Don't woman. Don't get into that. I'm sorry. There's another woman that, that is not, doesn't have the gift, but she felt mm. in this room, something's off. Well, he went, he went in, you did he call you into the room? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was historical society had set up a bunch of easels and pictures of old time stuff. All the old time photos of the history of the mansion. With And there was a family shot? Many family shots. That's what was a trippy about it because he, he, you know, when you look at all those photos, it shows family and all little kids and stuff like that. And by the way, a boy. Right. 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 So, I mean, we thought, oh, there's only a, a little girl and a man. No, he, he saw a boy. Juan saw a boy. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what was crazy about it. He was so adamant. You got to come, come. I go, what's going on? Just, just come here. Go, okay, okay, okay. I go in there. We walk through the people. He went up to the photo and just went, see that kid? I said, yeah, that's the kid I saw on the railing. And I said, "What?" And didn't didn't that's... didn't you try finding that picture? You yeah. tried for the well, longest time. Yes, I did. But here's the deal. And and I thought about this before the show tonight. I was thinking, "Damn, I wish I had that photo." Mm-hmm. But um, it was put up. Some of those photos were all also from another woman that was working outside the city. Mm. She helped bring in those photos. Oh, so it wasn't because within it, the city you could have found them. 
Possibly. I see. Uh, I don't think it was just uh, friends of. I think it was another woman who did a I lot see. of stuff okay, for that, the city as well. That explains that. And, and I wanted to find that so badly. I know. But, but it, had I found the photo, I wouldn't remember it, to oh. be honest. I just looked and went, whoa, that's the kid. Yeah, oh, my God. Then we no, chat, 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 right. and I'm walking away. Had I found, if I actually did find that photo to show Mike, he probably wouldn't remember. Right. It's so long. But you ago. weren't even thinking about taking a picture of that photo and for document, document, no, documenting it. No, no, you just don't think of that. No, yeah. no, not not back then. Because the point was that I had this guy tell me, my buddy tell me what happened to him, and it was so engrossing. I was like, wow. Yeah. And then. And then you just kind of let it go and go, wow, that's a creep. Because I'm not thinking of writing anything. I know, but I love that story. I love that Mm, story. Me too, man. Me too. Let's jump to the servant's wing break room. Oh. Okay. Okay. Wow. And my question to you is, uh, regarding the break room, what was the room originally? And was it, it wasn't called the break room? No, no, no. Obviously. No, no. It it was a uh, a servant's quarter Mm. room. So... We're, we're, we're now, now that we just got out of the, the new kitchen and went upstairs with Mike to follow the kid, now we're up on the second floor servant's wing. There's a hallway there, and then to the left is what we call our break room. And that was a room uh, that was for the maids or the workers there. They usually put two to a room. Oh. So now remember, they took out like four or five of them. So those for rooms, your For your favorite... Item in the mansion. The, the I'm going to loosen this up. The new You're kitchen. Get one of these oh, in a minute. Okay. Yes. So, uh, each room had usually two workers. Hmm. Um, there were like 17 uh, servants there that lived in the mansion, uh, and during the day, like sometimes 30 up to 34. That, that worked throughout the mansion. Oh my god! Right? I didn't know that. There, yeah. That, that many people were yeah. working there. Yeah. Holy cow. So. Um, so the, 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 what became our break room, oddly enough, um, was that room supposedly, and when Lisa Williams showed up, and I don't think we're doing a thing with Lisa Williams. I think that's, yeah. This amazing psychic, maybe I told you in a prior show, uh, but Lisa Williams, Life Among the Dead was the name of her program. I don't remember this. And Merv Griffin wanted to get her to, you know, shoot a show there, which she did. Um, but she... When we took a break at three in the morning, I think I even said this before, when we took a break at three in the morning, I walked out to the center courtyard with Lisa and she was talking about how she felt yes, sick, like she was this. Right? pregnant and all that stuff. When we're out in the, in the courtyard, she said, uh, I said, you were bang on, there, was, there were maids that got pregnant yeah. and killed themselves. And she pointed up to the break room mm. and said, do you see her? And I said, see who? Do you see the woman in the window? And I said, no. She goes, she's waving at us. I'm so, I'm sorry, I, I don't see her. She goes, something happened to her up there. Mm. So okay. that, that room uh, was a servant's room, and we were told that this servant uh, hung herself in that room. And because um, she had gotten pregnant by someone in the house, which we won't get into. No. But uh, two servants killed themselves because of it. Catholic family is a sin, all this stuff, and these poor women. Yeah. Work. Well, this... this um, so it's active. The room's active. Amazing. Next up is uh, Dan Hernandez. And you had... Uh, who did you interview f- for this segment? It was Dan, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what's I, up next. Yeah, I interviewed Dan, and uh, because he got a hold of me one day. Oh, I see. Okay. He, yeah, he sent me a text one day, and, and I, we don't, you know, I don't have to read the, the specific text right here, but the text was basically, "I'm hearing noises up here," mm. and I'm like, "Where are you?" I'm up in the break room, that kind of a thing, mm-hmm. and I'm saying uh, footsteps, and I said, "Did you look out and check?" He goes, "Yep, nothing," and I went, "Oh, okay." And he's like, this, "Are you? Is this part of the conversation? Are you going to give it away?" I don't think so. This was in a text. Okay. So I don't think it's in in. The, okay, but, but let's let's play it. Yeah. But it, I don't think it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that day, um, 
I came into the break room because it was right around 3 o'clock. I came in here to make an afternoon coffee. Came in the break room, made my coffee. I'm sitting down in the corner um, of the room in the little black chair here. And I can, when I'm sitting here, I can look out into the hallway here. So I'm sitting here and I'm on my phone just kind of looking at, you know, surfing the internet. Che had just gone to lunch. And he was in the upper ranger's office off the parking lot there. So I know no one was in the house. It was just me. And I'm here. I'm listening. To, I'm, I'm, I'm just surfing the net. And I hear footsteps. And again, no one is in the house. And it sounded like someone was coming up the steps very very lightly now this is the stairwell outside the servants wing yeah the circular stairwell yeah okay so i get up and i look through this little window here and i didn't see anybody but the footsteps were very very light like it was maybe a small person because I mean, we've been in this break room before, and we've heard people come up the stairs before. So you kind of know what footsteps sound like. I mean, you hear it all the time. But nothing was there. Now, did you ever hear them in the hallway out here, right outside? Never. No. It's no. Just, just on the stairwell. It sounded like the stairwell. I mean, it was outside this door off either, either down the hall or up the stairs. It was just very light footsteps. So you look to see that it was there... You don't see anything. Yeah. You text me and said, I'm freaking out. Yes. What did you do after you saw that there was nobody there? I, I literally stayed in here for two more minutes, and then I left. Did you leave frightened, or did you just leave, or you just wanted to leave? <laughs> no, I left frightened. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so uh, he, he, he sent me a text. And and said, I hear footsteps. This and the last thing was, uh, this is freaking me out, man. Really? Yeah, he was. And when he said that's, I asked him specifically. So did you leave just or did you leave frightened? I knew that's why you left. I read, yeah, because I read the text. So uh, so light light steps, possibly a child. Mm -hmm. Those steps coming up there. It's really hard to walk up those steps without making a sound. And the reason being. Because it's linoleum, mm -hmm. you know the metal strip that mm -hmm. holds the linoleum on there? Those, all those screws are loose in there. Mm -hmm. So if you step and it goes, it's almost like having taps on the bottom mm -hmm. of your shoes. And he's hearing really light footsteps. Boy, oh boy. And at that time, he's, if he's doing his lunch, there's nothing going on inside the mansion. There's no tour or... No, no, no. And anyway, no. you'd hear them talking. Yeah. Nobody would would want to be quiet. Yeah, there's no reason to be. You just, you'd walk up, we all walked up those steps yeah. to, to go into the break room, yeah. right? So there's no reason to be quiet. So hmm. something happened. And and and, and I, I love that it happened to Dan. He's had several things happen to him yeah. in this show. Uh, next segment, yeah. uh, Ranger Ivan. We're running right through these, aren't we? Well, yeah, we, we've okay. got a lot of stuff we're to go we through wanna make We want to get these out there for well, you. What did Ranger Ivan experience? That's what... Uh, I want That's to the question? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you what he experienced, but uh, here's what I will tell you about Ranger Ivan. And I don't know if this is part of it or maybe that might be coming up or something like that. But uh, um, I didn't know Ivan. He was brand new to the program, the Ranger program. And somebody came to me and said, you got to talk to Ivan. And I said, "Which? who is he? Ranger Ivan. Ivan Marti Martinez. Sorry about that. hope I didn't. No, sorry. He's in the book. You're in the book. So what the hell? I tried to protect you, sir. So um, he, uh, I went and met him at the library, I think it was. I think that's right, at the library, okay. to interview him and said, hey, you're telling me something happened. This is part of what took place. I think there are more things I can tell you maybe afterwards, but let's play okay. this and hear him. Okay. Yeah. I was by the break room, and I heard steps coming from the basement up the stairs. I went to go check it out. I didn't see anything, so I was like, you know what, I'm just scaring myself. So as I'm going back to the room, to the break room, the door slams in my face. The break room door. The break room door slams in my face. 
Hmm. So I'm thinking there's no there's no wind in here. There's no there's no one in here. So it's just me. So at that point, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna walk out. I laughed right away without even thinking about it. Didn't scream. Didn't. Just, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna walk away. That I can't explain. I just I heard the I heard the noise in the basement, so I went out off the door, mm -hmm. looked down, didn't see anything, so I went back and it just slammed in my face. I was just like, all right. No, did it slam as you were walking in? As I was walking in. So I was about two feet away from actually going through the door, and it just slams on my face. So I, was like, I stopped right before it slammed. I didn't know what to think of. I was just looking around. Like, all right, did someone open another door? Maybe the pressure just closed this one. And no one was in there. It was, it was early in the morning. So, I just, like I said, I just decided to walk out. Just not think about it. Is that wild? Yeah, it's funny because it, maybe the pressure. There's, I've, how, have, uh, how often have we been in that right. mansion? Yeah. A door has never Ever. slammed as a matter yeah. of fact, a door hasn't even moved because of <laughs> wind, or right. that's what I don't get. Because yeah. uh, I know this goes on a lot, a lot of door slams and sounds and things, but there's no way, th there's no wind that goes through there. Even when we have that, what's called Santa Ana's, if you're not from this area, uh, the, the wind from the desert. Even when they have that, you can stand in that mansion and it's just completely... Yeah, it's 46,000 square feet. Yeah. You're not going to open a window and go... Yeah, it just right. doesn't happen. Right, right. And, 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 you know, having been there 22 years and up in that break room, I can't even tell you how many thousand times, mm -hmm. like we hang out with Dan and Steve and all that stuff, uh, that has never, ever happened. That, that, and the fact that Ivan has the gift. Mm -hmm. Yet again, another ranger in the program who has the gift and boy did he find out several things that was just one of them walking up to that door to go inside the break room and it slams in his face yeah there's that no have, way he said he didn't scream he said in that i, I didn't scream or anything it's like well what, what, i would have jumped and yelled not me it, not me yeah right. i would have handled like a yeah. man no if you know was, that if somebody there, was near you you would have grabbed him and shoved him in front of you that's so wrong to say that right now uh on that, the that, uh, on the was, morning that was a difficult show for me Yes, it was, and I'm glad you went through it. Why bring it up again? I don't know. February 16th, 2018. Does that ring a bell? Ranger uh, uh, Chan? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this is <laughs> this is the coolest, man, for me, not for him. Remember Chan? He's the guy at the, the, the uh, grand entry. Ranger who, Chan. Ranger Chan, who uh, felt the hand on his neck. That's one thing. He's got something else coming up soon, which is wild as well but he had he, and he has the gift it's just great but they might as well just when they hire these people you know you're gonna you have to you know get dogs on leash gotta make sure you close the and make sure you have the gift yeah i mean it's it's nuts how many people actually have the gift it almost seems like they are they yeah. are hired because yeah. of that yeah so so february 16th uh 2018 chris mm -hmm. is that correct yeah mm -hmm. um i'm on my way to work that's probably close to 8 o'clock. I have to be there by 8. I'm driving there, and I get a panicked phone call from Ranger Chan. What is February 16th, by the way? It, it is the anniversary hmm. of the, the murder-suicides in the mansion of 1929. Yeah. Odd so, that this would happen on that uh, day. Odd it would happen. You obviously took a note of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, yeah. And to remind myself, like, oh, my God, this happened on that day? Yeah. Um, he was... Panic. Now he was up at the top parking lot, and you know at the ranger. Well, no, no, just cars coming in. You know, oh. we did this whole thing. They're still doing it, I think. Where when cars, when when properties are being built or rebuilt and all that stuff around that area, they have so many cars that come in. You can't park them on the street in Beverly Hills. It's a lot of restricted parking in Beverly Hills, so they they hire out Greystone, the upper parking lot, and charge by the car. Yeah. Uh, so that all the work, workers can get up there and then they bust them down. Or yeah, so every morning the, one, one ranger's up there counting the cars coming in because they have a... You've a, done that. You've counted those cars. I don't recall that. They have an allotment amount that they can have. And if they go over that, then you have to call the company and say, hey, you said 18 cars, we had 23. You know, So you have to get into that. So he's up there and I say, I I'm almost there. He says, okay, okay. I drive up there. And he is really shook. Mm. And uh, I hadn't seen him like that, really. Um, there are other things that have happened that we've talked about in the show. 
Uh, but he was really shook because it hmm. just happened that morning prior to his going up there to count the cars. So something happened to him that morning. Something is what you're happened saying. that morning in the break room. And we're going to try to put, pull this together here with uh, his dialogue. A lot of it is his trying to tell you what he's doing and what happened to him. Uh, but it's a lot of movement stuff that you won't see. So Yeah, you recorded him yeah. on your, with your phone. Yeah, just, just for the dialogue, right? So I'm not sure. Do you want me to talk about, in essence, what he is doing? Well, so, or do, do you, you want to play it first? Do you want to show your video of you coming up there, or do you want to do Chan first? Um, I, th I think... What we, you saw... Yeah, so so what happened was okay, I'm just going to tell the little story and then we'll get we'll figure this okay, out, okay? Okay. Here's the here's the just the overall story to what tell, happened. Tell them what happened and then we when we play the uh the pieces they'll understand what okay. they're hearing. Okay. So Chan you first, what happened when you walked up there? Okay, so I he told me I'm not going up there again and I said, "Okay, something had come had fallen and crashed." was glass and I said I tell you what I'll go up there and I will clean it up for you um because he, he wouldn't go up there he refused to go up there I said it's not a problem let me go up there he was that scared he was that scared so I decided what I'll do is I'll get my phone out and I'll do a walk but you you literally recorded it with your phone yeah yeah, yeah. I said because I don't know what I, I was kind of hoping that I would something oh would grab me. At least I have, now I have a story of, of, of an apparition or something right. like that instead of the, yeah, which didn't frighten me. So no, I, I ended up taking out my phone, putting on the video and going up the stairs. Okay. So describe, Oof. I'm going to pl I'll play this mm -hmm. and you can kind of describe if you want. Uh, we'll stay I'll, I'll on, give it the best. And then, then I'll, I'll reiterate yeah. what actually took yeah. place. Okay. So I'm, I'm so walking. So I'm going up the stairs. There's the door. You're at the door of the brace room. Open. Mm -hmm. Now the door's closed. I open it up. And there's the mess in the floor. And... Which is what? Okay. You want to... I'm walking in with, the, with my phone now. So that was up there. So it was a... It was a down here. It was a poster with glass and everything of a design, a car show that we did. We, we good. Yep. Okay. So w w that didn't really help you, did it? But but the well, but, it, it it does. Yeah. It does. So, so the deal is, um, once he said he wouldn't go up there, I said I would go up there. I walk up the stairs, and I get to the top landing, turn left, and now that's the break room. I've got my my phone on the door that is closed. That, that that means something. I open the door. The light is on inside the room. And I look on the floor. And this poster that was up there slammed and crashed and sh just shards of uh, shards of, of glass all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he was that that's what panicked him. Now, um, we can listen to Chan. And hear what he has to say, and then I'll describe to you what he's telling you. I'm sorry, it's it's like this, but it was really difficult because uh, it was all in pieces. And yeah, and he was telling me how it went. And, and remember, I wasn't going to do this like this on on a, an audio type basis. It was just for just for the book. The book. But let's let's hear him. Yeah. And then I'll 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 tell you what what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, what's yeah. going on. It, it might be self explanatory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Came in like that. So the two doors like this, Cleek. Mm -hmm. Got my coffee. My mother said my coffee mug. Got my coffee out. Very sure. Turn this off. Walked out and goes like, put my coffee lid. I walked by the hall. Saw here. Grab it here. Screw back on. Got this in my hand. Walked over here. Grab this. I close this like this. Walked over here, grabbed this, walked out, and with this hand, I hit this light like this. At the same, when I hit this light, I heard a, a thump. Okay, so 
That was kind of difficult, wasn't it? What he's doing is he came in to get a coffee before to go before he started his his thing up at the top parking lot. When you walk in there, to the direct right is a closet. Remember, this was somebody's room, a maid's room. Inside the closet, we have a refrigerator and a and, and a and a coffee machine. So if you open the door. So the door swings open inside, you're walking in, there's another door here that you're opening to go in and get your coffee. He does that, he says he got his mug, this and that. He closed that door, you heard closing was the door to the, to the closet. He starts to walk out and he changes hands and he switches off the light in the room. And as he's grabbing the door to close, he hears a thump. That thump within the room made him look back like, what is that? And this thing, this, this, this framed poster on the top of the shelving that we have, and the shelving is probably about five feet high, flew off. And he's just watching it fly off, and then it crashed, and he ran. And he ran out and went up, and, and that's when he called me. So, uh, do you want to let him describe the sound? Yeah, let's let's do that, and then I'll. Okay. I'll... And then that sound, doosh, so I saw the whole thing on the floor. I witnessed the picture frame glass all shatter right there. Mm -hmm. All I did next was just take off running. Sure. So when you leave, the door's like it is right there. But I witnessed. Then I show up. Nobody else came up before I went in today. Just you. There's That's nobody yep. nobody else in the house? No. It was 6.40. Oh, 6.40. A.m. in the morning. First thing, I disarmed the mansion. Went here, get my coffee. No one else be in here. But but from that time on, did somebody come in? And if they did, they wouldn't go in here unless it was another ranger. You didn't have any other rangers up here. No. Well, that's interesting in itself because I don't know how that's possible. This is what I saw right there, Cleve. Like I say, glass, right on the that's floor. on the floor. Right there. With this glass broke. But why would I want to, but why would I want to close the door again? You know, it'll run off. No. Right. Uh, so, what do you think it was? Uh, yeah. So, explain so, that what, what he was. Okay. The, the thing that was really kind of freaky about it. First of all, it's freaky that the thing just flew off the the shelving, right? And again, it's Chan. He, uh, uh, yeah, Chan, who has the gift. Um, and he's he's always said that he feels uncomfortable in that room. By the way, I don't know if you know that. He it, no. He didn't know that that a, that a, a woman hung herself in there. So the first time he ever went in there, that Steve turned it into a break room. We put a table by the window that looks out in the courtyard. That's why we made it our break room, because you could look out in the right, courtyard right. and keep an eye on what's mm -hmm. going on. And he said he sat there, he started eating his lunch. He's like, he felt something, and he kept looking at the door, like somebody was standing at the door watching him. And he, and he has a sandwich, and he's like, packs it up, walks out, and, and Steve's out in the courtyard. He says, I thought you were going to take your break up there. He goes, not up there. I'm going mm. to top parking lot lead up there. So he didn't didn't knew he didn't know it the the history to it, but it bothered him. So in this moment, here's what's really interesting. He tells me that he's inside, he starts to leave, turns off the light, starts to close the door and hears the thump and then looks inside and sees this thing fly and crash and he runs. When I go up with my phone, I go up to the door, the door's closed. I open the door, the light is on. Now he's told me, and he's adamant about this, I'm not going to hear something that scares the hell out of me and close, turn, turn, right. on, turn on the light and close the door. It doesn't make sense. He goes, when I heard that thump and saw that thing land, I just bolted. So why was hmm. the door closed when I went up? And why was the light on that he shut off yeah. when I was up? It doesn't make any sense. And by the way, this this thump thing uh, happens to him again later on in, in, in an episode. Mm. It's like they're trying to get your attention so that you look in their direction 
And then they do something. And this happened to be taking this huge poster that had, that had a glass uh, frame. It mm -hmm. was a frame with a glass yeah, right. in front of the poster. Just picked up, and he showed me how it did. He picked up, he picked like that. Well, let's Bam. let let's let him say about this what he saw. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Continue. Ten. Yep. That's what I saw right there, Cleve. Like I say, glass. Roof. That's on the floor right there with this glass broke. But why would I want to? But why would I want to close the door again? You know, it'll run off. No. Right. Uh, so what do you think it was? Now, was that the same one? Did you play the same one? Or is that the ending of it? Because uh, I think we just heard that, by the way. Mm, okay. Well, we have one more. Okay, let, let's play that one, because okay. that's one more. Yeah. You want to run again, don't you? Oh, yeah. I'm going to run again. <laughs> Something happened here. Okay, thanks. It's like I say, Cleve, this is just odd. No, it's, it's, yeah, that's course, very odd. It's, I just hear it. It's just like right out there. I saw the whole thing. Just... And then the story. You know, I think I might step, just skip the step too. So okay, I, I, might believe, I might just like flew off the step, just like here. And then, oh, God. <laughs> I'm not just hop forward to get three steps. I just, out of here. Right? Yeah. So what he, what yeah, he, we did play it twice because yeah, I didn't check it off. That's okay. But what, he, what he's saying is when you go outside the break room, there are like three steps to the right. It gets you down to the to the hallway landing of the uh, servant's wing, and then you turn right again. There are more steps. Now you're into the, the spiral-like staircase that goes down to the new kitchen. So what he said he did was when he ran out, he jumped those steps and landed wow. and then jumped down into the spiral staircase and just ran out. So it, 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 it scared him that much. And, uh, you know... I would be too, when, when, especially when something in that violent with the glass, that must have sounded, you know, when you, when you frame, oh. frame something, it used to be at Aaron Brothers, they left, but when you frame something, that glass usually isn't real thick. No, it's right? very thin. So, and that, it's, when that cr crashes, it's so loud. Splinters into a billion yeah. pieces. Yeah, so he must have just freaked. And, and it's very quiet inside when you're in the mansion, so yeah. that even, it would have accentuated that noise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why yeah. do you think it happened? Something like that happened uh, to him. I, I think it's it's a theme that we've had with all these episodes, and especially like with Lou's and everything. I think they just want your attention. Mm. Now, if that is in that room where a woman hung herself, truly, and I believe that's true. Um, but we have no proof. We, we have, don't know. We, we have not on this one, but another one we do, and we're going to get into that down in a show or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but. This woman, we were told when we started working, it was a long time ago, that they had heard that a woman hung herself. Yeah, hung herself in that room. And um, so if she's still in there, and by the way, there was a, a time that I went in there because I felt, I felt so bad for her, that woman, because she got pregnant and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and then she killed herself. And so I went in there one morning with my, my phone, and I turned it on record, and I said, I, I, I know that you're in here, and if, if you are in here, um, why, why are you still in here? And uh, is, is the reason that you're still in here because you're afraid to find out what, what's going to happen to you on the other side? And by the time I said the word side, you hear a yes. And that was like, ugh, that killed Do we me. have that recording? I have it somewhere, but it's when you hear it, I step on there, yes. So it's hard to hear it. I can hear it because I know my voice and I know how to listen for it. But mm. you can hear yes. And I've played it for other people and they go, I hear that. I hear mm. that. Okay. It's just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Right. So yeah. yeah, that was brutal, brutal. So we're let's wrap we? it up. Oh, we're at a wrap oh, up already. Oh, yeah. Wow. We've been going, going, going. But we I got the so. sound of the week. Oh, I love it. I and always forget that every time. I know. It's like this, you're stalking <laughs> at Christmas. I always oh. forget this. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one because it happened uh, literally eight years ago today. Wow, really? To the day. Wow, I love you when you come up with these little information well, that's, that's my job. Oh, that's what you do. Yeah, I don't do much else. But, that's not true. You know. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, eight years ago today. Does it have a title? Uh, it does, but it'll give it away. Let's not do that. Let's, let's listen to let's it. Let's play it. Sounds like a door. 
You know what's cool about that? Mm. It's ba bum. I mean, it, what like it? Like like when you shut a door sometimes, and and the uh, the frame of the door is is perfect for it. Mm-hmm. You won't hear you won't hear anything because it it shuts perfectly. Mm-hmm. This sounds like it has a little mist to it. Like ba-bum. so, you're saying it's a door? It is a door. Oh, come on. Get out. You're well, or, or 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 a cabinet, a big cabinet, or mm. something. The door. If you're saying it's a door, it's that tightness that you hear the sh- yeah yeah the, before it locks yeah. in, and, yeah. and you have it labeled as door slam. Yeah. Well, I got this woman next door where I live who does it constantly, and oh. it, and it, it's just, it sounds the same. Boom boom. Oh oh wow. really? Yes. One yeah. more time. Maybe it's her. We've all heard that at our house or at a friend's place or whatever, that kind of door close. Is that wild? Yeah, that's crazy. And there's nobody there at night. These are all recordings that I did when nobody's in the mansion. As we've told you, he's been in there a hundred million yeah. times yeah. and left his yeah. recorder yeah. and sits there and, and writes and then listens to these blank recordings. So you get a little bit more insight as to how his brain works. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell. Um and leave a review if you're on, or, or can leave a review if you're on the uh, Spotify or any of those. And if you're on YouTube, yeah, feel free to leave a comment. We would love that. Um, but anyway, if you've had a personal experience that you want to talk about, leave it in the comments on YouTube or, or get a hold of us at ghostsofgraystone.com and uh, leave us a message. Especially we want to hear from you if you have had an experience at Greystone. He wants to hear about it. Yep. Um, and uh, do, we, do we have a book there that possibly we, could, we should try to promote once again? We do have the book uh, the at worst. our website. We're the worst. <laughs> we are the worst. We're the worst. Yeah. We have a, a book at, on our website, and um, you can buy it there, and we'll send a bookmark. It's pretty cool. It's a 32, 1932 census. It yeah. has the staff of the house yeah. on it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And a magnet and all that kind yeah. of thing. But we'll send that for free. Let me just say voices, mm-hmm. shadows, temperature changes. And Trapped Spirits. That's the next episode? That's the next episode. Next episode is Servant's Wing, Second Floor. Let me tell you something, my friends. Oh. When it comes to this mansion, uh, uh, it's the basement is like really horrible. Second floor landing and the Servant's Wing hallway, second floor up there. Those are the those are the creepy the creepy creepers. They, they feel a little creepy. And there. I think I think I'm not sure about this, but I think there are. It's a two parter. Is that correct? Do um, I'm not. I don't know not yet. Not sure because there's so many. Mm-hmm. But it'll it'll be great. It's gonna be fun, and and, and it which always amazes me because just because you can't see it mm-hmm. doesn't mean it isn't there. Thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate it. A hundred horses. In five freight trains Couldn't drag me Into that early grave I've cashed in The mistakes I've made While God rode shotgun From a million miles away I don't wake in sorrow I don't walk in shame I don't deal in hearsay I don't dwell in
ride until the trail grows cold Where the hillsides burn and burn smoke The sheep and the shepherd are lost on different roads Blinded by hate, blinded by hope I don't wake in sorrow, I don't walk in shame I don't kill in hearsay, I don't dwell in blame Sometimes it's best to forget what I know and what they say But this ain't that time